Hi, and welcome back again to VivimAP. My name is Stefan Eder, and this is my show. People, I got vaccinated today. Yay! Our opening speaker today is Ingrid Padilla, who is a postdoctoral scholar at Ashley Martini's research group at the University of California, Merced. She earned a Bachelor of Science in Mechanical Engineering in Cali, Colombia, researching carbon nanotubes. Her interest in nanotechnology and the multi-scale modeling of materials got her a PhD in nanoengineering from North Carolina A&T State University in Greensboro. Her doctoral research focused on modeling the effect of the phase interactions, internal friction, and composition of cement paste at the nanoscale on the macroscale elastic properties, which is what she's going to talk about right now. Please put your questions in the box below. Coatings is a peer-reviewed journal of coatings and surface engineering published online by MDPI on a monthly basis. And now, cement paste yummy! Hey there! Thanks for watching this video. Today, I'm going to be talking about cement paste and about the interatomic level interactions and how they affect the macroscopic behavior. I did this research when I was at the Joint School of Nanoscience and Nanoengineering in Greensboro, North Carolina. So if we talk about cement paste, we're also going to be talking about concrete since cement paste is the main material for concrete. So can you imagine a world without concrete? We will not have bridges, we will not have roads, we will not have big buildings. Even the water that you get at home make it there thanks to dams made of concrete. So we consume this material so much that it's second in consumption just after water. And I'm going to show you here the production per year. In just 20 years, we have increased the production in nearly 200%. So although this material brings a lot of progress to different communities, it also has a lot of problems. And if we keep consuming concrete at this rate, that's not sustainable. The production of cement paste and concrete requires a very large amount of energy and contaminates a lot. We can see here this news header saying how destructive it is for the world. And that's not the only problem. But you may have also hear about dams breaking and flooding and all of the infrastructure problems that damages in concrete are creating and this also increased the demand. So we need to find a way to produce different concrete. But the first step, of course, is to study this material. So what is concrete? Concrete is a random complex composite at each length scale. Starting from the top, we have concrete, which is made of mortar, rocks, and admixtures. Mortar itself is made of sand and cement paste. Now cement paste is a composite formed by hydrated phases and unhydrated phases that didn't fully react with water. There is also a lot of porosity in this mixture, but each of these phases, the unhydrated cement and the hydrated cement, have also other phases if we keep going down in a scale at the nanometer scale. So knowing this basic initial information, we want to tailor the material. We want to make it more sustainable, but also increase mechanical and thermal properties, make it heat resistant, more durable, more accessible, etc. So to do that, we need to understand better the material at molecular level. And here you can see an SEM image of cement paste. And you see here the three main components I talk about on hydrated cement, porosity and hydrated cement. So if we go for the unhydrated, um, and I'm going to be talking a lot about C3S, which is not related to carbon. I'm using here civil engineering notation, where C is calcium oxide and S is silicon dioxide. So you have C3S and C2S, three calcium silicate and decalcium silicate that are the largest components, accounting for more than 70%. Now, when they react with water, and again, they react partially, but when they react with water, we have CSH of calcium silicate hydrate. This account for more than 60% of the total material at the end in the mixture. And it is the uh, matrix, it's the main component of cement paste. So this is what we know, but there are still many unknowns. 
For example, it is still unknown the kinetics of hydration. We still don't know the structure of the CSH, but we know that it's mostly amorphous. And then there are no studies of the phase interactions. So if we want to start a study this composite and we want to add nanomaterials to it, we need to understand how these phases interact with each other and how they will interact with the nanomaterial. So with this in mind, we decided that we couldn't just jump in, into the research and add nanomaterials to our models, but instead we needed to create the initial models that will account for these phase interactions. So that's the main research goal. So the first attempt um, or the first model was to create these multiphase systems using uh, genite, which is a known mineral that is similar to CSH in cement paste, but it's not the final one. As I said, uh, it is amorphous and we don't fully know the structure, but this kind of resembles what has been observed experimentally. We also use uh, for the second phase C3S and C2S because are the main unhydrated components. And we created two types of models. The first one represent admixtures. And starting from initial uh, simulation boxes, we put them together in a larger box that corresponded to the uh, size of genite, which is the CSH phase in this case, but with uh, following the rule of mixtures for density. We also created models that were more like simulating larger grains where we increased the size of the initial grain and then broke them together. So we did a different series of simulations, but the first thing I'm going to talk here about is shear stress. And these are the results. So we saw an increase in shear modulus and we saw an increase in shear strength for the uh, admixture system. And this is um, mostly because genite itself is a layer material. So when shear stress was applied, there was more possibility for a sliding from this um, layer following this movement. And we also know or notice that there was like a weak material in this case and was related to the calcium interactions. Genite is made mostly of um, calcium layers mixed with silicon oxide layers with water in between. So the water and the calcium um, were the weak part of the structure. But when we broke C3S or C2S in this case, that doesn't have the water and that uh, creates like a barrier for this sliding to happen, the shear modulus increased. Then the next model that we tried um, was to calculate mechanical properties. So the first thing that we saw is that the individual phases are anisotropic, and I'm talking about C2S, C3S, and CSH. They were anisotropic in behavior, but when mixed together, the material behave as a mixture, and they exhibit approximately isotropic behavior. Then we calculated with the rule of mixtures, um, high bond and lower bond, and you can see the here the results for the bull modulus following the two approaches. And we saw that first, the properties do not fully match the rule of mixtures, but they present a little deviation of the trend. And this is due because the rule of mixtures just takes into account the uh, percentage of each component, but doesn't really take into account any molecular interaction or any phase distribution. That is something we can really study with um, our results in molecular dynamics. We found also that the results for approach a, that is that mixed phases, is larger, a little bit larger than approach B, which corresponds to clusters of individual phases. And this is due to the amount of intermolecular phases that um, are between CSH and the unhydrated. So they are higher for the admixtures, therefore that created a higher um, bulk modulus and the elastic properties in general. But we saw that our model still had limitations, especially the bulk modulus was overestimated, was too high. And then the CSH that we were using was a crystal, so it wasn't amorphous. So we decided to do a different type of model. And in this case, we decided to, do, um, to use the React FF for this and to have a mix of experiments and molecular dynamics uh, simulations. 
all together. So here you can see the relations between our experiments and the molecular dynamics. We use XRD to define the phases that we were looking at, the crystalline and the amorphous phases. This information was also mixed with SEM. And in this case, we wanted to check how the phases were distributed in the samples and then do nano indentation. Since we cannot control the nano indenter to indent a specific phase, there were a mixture of all of these phases. So we needed to have a characterization prior to, na to the nano indentation. Now, all of this information was used for the reactive model and then coming back for comparison with the nano indentation. To reduce the complexity of the experiments and the models, we limited our study just to the hydration of C3S. Next, I'm going to show you some XRD results. So we saw a very large amount of amorphous, and you can see here as a background. So this is the CSH. This is what we were expecting. So we had to use an internal standard. We use Chromium in this case to just compare our calculations to um, the calculated amorphous. And we saw first that the reactions happened mostly in the first two days of hydration. So this is the initial C3S, which is a triclinic structure, by the way. And when mixed with water, this is what we have. So the peaks didn't change much after um, many days of hydration, but uh, cement paste in general is a material that ages. So it is considered mature after 28 days, but it is known that it continues um, evolving during the all time that it exists. We observed that C3S reduced with time and in, with hydration, with more water, we also saw this. Um, we also saw that at the beginning there was some CH, which is the other hydrated phase, and it reduced with time when um, the hydration process continues. But there was a very large increase in CSH amorphous. And we also saw a little bit of calcite that happens with the reactions of CO2, probably from the experimental um, handling. Then for SEM, um, these are different images for different times of hydration, starting from two days to 28 days. And we see large amounts of the original C3 as here, but we see also a lot of uh, porosity. So, Cement paste is a very tricky material for SEM characterization because it can crack easily in this early state, it's very delicate. And because it has so many porosity, it's difficult also to polish and have a flat, uh, nice surface that we can easily characterize. But anyways, um, we had results from different times of hydration, and we saw that the C3S reduces. We found that there are two uh, hydrated phases that could correspond to two different types of CSH, or can be CSH and CH, which is the other possible component that we saw um, from XRD. Unfortunately, we couldn't calculate the amount of voids, so we don't really know if it increased or decreased, and it was mostly because of the amount of cracks that occur even during the characterization. But this gave us a general idea of what the composition was and how it was distributed uh, in the whole surface. We also observed a reduction in the grain size of C3S with hydration time. And this was very important for the nano indentation results because we saw very few spots where the properties were closer to those of C3S. And this is because the uh, grain size was so small that the indentation wasn't happening just in that phase, but it was instead in a mixture of all of them. Anyways, we use Gaussian mixture models to correlate the properties with the possible phases in the mixture. And we found not just one, but two different types of CSH, one low density and one high density with a slightly different elastic properties. We also found CH and a little bit of C3S. But we also calculated a creep parameter and we saw that CSH presents a viscous behavior. Now, with this information, we created different uh, molecular dynamics models. And the first one may seem pretty um, logical, and it was like a hydration process of C3S. So this is our model. 
uh, the solid crystal was in the center, we make sure that the water that we put in the box didn't uh, come into the porosity of the structure at the beginning of the simulation when we were creating this model. We use a cannoli surface around the C3S to create this. And then we found very interesting results. Here you can see the chemical shrinkage and this is normal for cement paste. When you mix your powder with water, the initial volume of powder plus water that you have is not the same as the final volume. It always shrinks a little bit. And you can see here the experimental values for C3S. Now, our models um, predicted a very similar chemical shrinkage. And you can see here, it's very close to experimental one. And that was our first result for this model. However, it had problems, and the first one, it was the water tessellation. We saw uh, kind of like a layer or a different material form almost at the border of the crystal, and um, where the calcium atoms interacted with the water, with the hydrogens in specific, and created hydroxide groups. So this is how the kinetics happens, or at least in theory is what is expected. But our simulation time all too long couldn't be long enough to have the whole structure fully hydrated. Um, but other than the water tessellation and this um, formation of hydroxyl groups, we also saw the formation of um, silicon oxygen silicon chains, as you can see here one example, or here another example. And this is expected from the CSH experiments that have been observed. So it's pretty interesting, but it's still not mo the best models to characterize the composite that we want to study. We then created layer models and we use this structure that is a semi-amorphous CSH created by Dr. Roland Pelenc from MIT to represent the amorphous CSH phase. We had one challenge in our simulations and was due to the lattice mismatch. C3S and CSH are three clinic structures. C2S is monoclinic. But this means that the sides and the angles were completely different. So we had to make some assumptions. And the first one was that we will be using an average lattice side and angle. And also we follow the orientation of the C3S phase. So I'm showing here a model of compression of this structure. And you can see here at the right the calculation of the bulk modulus. C3S has a very large bulk modulus compared to CSH. It's about 100 uh, compared to 2025, depending on the phase. But we saw that before 50 or 60 percent, there was not a big increase in the bulk modulus with increase of C3S. When analyzing our molecular structures, we saw that at the interface, some of the water of CSH was interacting with C3S, kind of like the hydration model that I showed before, where the calcium interacted with the water to form hydroxyl groups. This prevented the modulus to increase uh, with increasing C3S. So some few takeaways from this uh, talk and from the experiments, you can see the structural changes, how the CSH amorphous increases while the C3S reduces in grains and amount. But the most important takeaway is that the mechanical and trichological properties depend on the interaction of the phases at atomic level. So if we are simulating cement phase with inclusion of nanomaterials, we cannot just talk about one particular phase. That is what most studies have done. Um, talking about CSH, but we need to take into account also the interaction with the other molecular phases. Now, we saw that there is some friction resistance between the phases when they are together, and that, of course, completely changes the deformation process, especially if there is some sort of uh, sliding or some shear stress applied. We were able to capture uh, chemical shrinkage, but we could also model other phenomena that happen in um, cement, such as carbonation. And then uh, these models can really be expanded. We can include more um, phases. We can separate the phases to include voids and add nanomaterials.
Next, I'm going to show you three possible applications for this sort of work. And the first one would be safe and reliable storage for nuclear waste. So we're seeing here the sarcophagus at Chernobyl. Concrete was already poured inside when the disaster happened. However, an additional structure was needed to prevent radiation from escaping. So we could make this cement better by adding nanoparticles. For example, gadolinium has been shown to be very good providing radiation shielding. Another possible application would be in uh, rocket launching. So the trench underneath usually gets damaged because of the high heat that the launch, is, the launch produces. So this material can also use nanoparticles or other sort of additives to improve the heat resistant properties. And then finally, we have underwater uh, cement. And there is a problem with underwater cement that can occur due to leaching of calcium with the water interacting with the calcium in the cement. And as we know, this is a porous material. So two problems can happen there. There could be contamination in the surrounding areas. Uh, in the surrounding water, but there could also be a structural damage. So in general, by using nanoparticles or other additives, we could also reduce the amount of concrete that we have to use for our applications and make the material more sustainable. Finally, I would like to acknowledge the support of the Joint School of Nanoscience and Nanoengineering and uh, from the US Army Research Office. I had help also with the experimental part of this work and from the computational uh, part for the models, the force field was provided by Dr. Adri Van Duin uh, for the REACT force field and uh, the CSH amorphous structure was provided by Dr. Roland Pelenk from MIT. Thank you all for watching this video.